pickle. Post time to do tips. some. Um, time to do a little bit of uh, college football postmortems. We're rolling through these this week, uh, wrapping up the 2020 college football season here in February. Because you know why not? They're all on the YouTube page, cut separate too. If you want to go back and watch just one individual, we're gonna pick it up today with Hoot Hoot. <laughs> the Rice Owls. Going to talk some Rice Owls uh, football uh, here and, and taking a look at, at what they were able to do this year. Of course, Rice had a very odd season. They went 2-3 and three this year. Uh, and so we're going to get hand out some grades. We're going to start with the offense. Offense, I don't really think... Um, I mean, it's just me. I'm going to give them a D-. Yeah. Uh, I thought the offense was pretty underwhelming. I thought that they were a team that, uh, you know, under Mike Bloomgren, they always want to establish the run. Pretty much failed at that mm-hmm. on a consistent basis. I mean, they average fewer than three yards carry this year. That is just not going to cut it. Now, I think they were able to throw the ball a little bit more effectively than they thought whenever they, you know, whether it was Mike Collins or Giovanni Johnson, whoever mm-hmm. was out there, they were able to throw the ball a little bit more effectively than maybe they thought they were. But overall, I thought that the offense was pretty underwhelming, and especially that offensive line got beat up. They're, 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 they're Quarterbacks were constantly on the run. They were not able to establish the run. The offensive line, I thought, was pretty darn bad. Uh, and as a result, I thought that really cut the legs mm-hmm. out from underneath the offense. And if they're going to fix that, that's the, if they're going to fix the team and get, get move them in the same right direction again, it's got to start on the offensive line, in my opinion. I would give them a D- minus on the offensive side. I won't give away what the next grade is for their defense, but the offense not being able to capitalize on the turnovers that they were given – was the most mm-hmm. frustrating thing because the defense would come up with some pretty decent sure. amount of turnovers and then there was just no offensive production that could get done. Yeah. So um, let's go to the defense. And I think I'm probably underrating them a little bit, but I'm going to give them a B-. minus. That I think you could really make an argument for a B. B. Yeah, I would say um, about a B. In this one. I think it's closer to, let's put it this way, it's a B-, minus, but it's closer to a B than a C+. Plus. Yes. And... The numbers are really impressive. I mean, this is a team that was 12th in the nation in scoring offense. This is a or scoring defense rather. A team that was 21st in the nation in total defense, right? I mean, the numbers are really good. I think that those numbers are probably not indicative uh, of. I mean, because here's what they did really well. Okay, what they did really well was that they picked off the ball a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay, they had a ridiculous interception rate mm-hmm. top 10 interception rate they they came up with big plays and as a result they turned the like they were able to, to kind of bend don't break type uh type stuff and so as a result they were pretty darn good on the on the defensive side i think part of it uh now i think if you dig into the numbers their rushing defense was not incredible right yeah their passing defense was not incredible but they came up with big plays at the right moment. Mm-hmm. They were buoyed by those splash plays. They were buoyed by whenever they would get to the quarterback. They were buoyed by, um, you know, uh, big interceptions at the right time. So overall, on balance, I think that's a B minus. Yeah. And it's a team that, that I don't think it was an elite defense. I don't think it's as elite as maybe those top line numbers indicate. Right. I think when you dig down, it's a little bit more kind of smoke and mirrors. I think you could say their top f- or their back four were. I thought their back four were pretty were good. Were pretty elite. For I sure. mean that that that's what gets them up to that B threshold rather than the the C plus. Entirely agree. So I'm gonna go B minus for Rice on their defensive side. Team MVP. Uh, I'm gonna give it to linebacker Blaze Aldridge. Yep. I thought that he was their best player. I'm not just saying that because he's transferring to Missouri, but uh, I thought that he was. <laughs> I thought he was their best player. I thought that he was overall their their best overall talent on the defensive side. I thought that he was a guy who really stepped up in a leadership role on that defense and led the way for them. Um, he also has the cabbage. The hair The hair is excellent for yes. Blaze Um The name and the hair. But that's going to be a big loss for them going forward as we kind of transition into the 2021 expectations. Um, I think that they could use... I mean, Rice had such a bizarre season. Yeah. Okay? This is a... T- I mean, we were sitting here on this on this show... Saying we don't every know single week, <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if we're ever going to see this team take the field because mm-hmm. they backed up. I mean, even when Conference USA got going, mm-hmm. they were, um, they were, eh, you know, we're we're going to hold off uh, longer yeah. and longer and longer. They ended up playing five games. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I draw a whole lot of conclusions about the trajectory of the Mike Bloomgren era at Rice based on 2020. No. There are other programs that I do, right? Like we talked about North Texas yesterday. I know North Texas had a weird year. Everybody had a weird year. But I do think that that 
is more that's an established li- program that's already. more in line with what i think we know about seth luttrell's program i think that this is in a lot of ways i think 2020 is just going to be a bit of like a an, an aberration and yeah. and not necessarily a sign of things to come for rice so i don't want to put too much stock into it with that said you know, look, they're going to have a fair amount of the defense back, mm-hmm. which is good. Now, they do lose Blaze Aldridge. He tra- he's transferring. Um, uh, they, they, they do, um, you know, they, they are going to need to to fill that up. Um, they're also losing, you know, Juwan King is transferring. Their running back mm-hmm. is transferring. They do have some playmakers they're going to need to replace. But I do think that overall, I don't know if I necessarily change my opinion on where Rice is and where Rice is heading. Right. Um, and, of course, look, they got the big – they have probably – you know, one of the most impressive wins in the state when they went to Marshall and beat previously unbeaten mm-hmm. Marshall. Yeah, they also um, had a quad doink this year. <laughs> they also had a quad doink. Um, <laughs> I would just say that this is a, I don't know if I necessarily put a ton of stock into saying that Rice is definitely uh, taking a step back. I'm very interested to see how they fill out some of the pieces offensively mm-hmm. and can they get the offensive line back churning the way that they need it to in order to get that offense from a D minus to again just like a B. If they yeah. get to a B, Not then you're talking about you're talking about a team that in a weak conference USA West, I think can contend for a division mm-hmm. title. I think too, this goes back to your article, like your hot takes article the other day of even high school programs that as they had they had a good defense and it kept them in games, but it was the amount of they didn't have their offense set and then mm-hmm. they missed so many games. You can't you can't expect a whole lot of offensive production when you're not out there playing every week. Right. I th- I, t- I totally agree. So, there you go. That is the Rice postmortem. 